Hey, hello, it's Friday ketchup time. Woo, Friday. Hello, welcome uh, Chris, yes. and uh, today we have a guest. We have Lubos here. And Lubos is a release manager for SUSE, and then specifically for OpenSUSE Leap. Um, but first, before... Hello, Lubos. Hey, guys. Hello, Lubos. Nice to be here. Good to have you, man. Thanks for uh, taking the time uh, to be in Friday Ketchup. Uh, but before we go to you, Lubos, and uh, ask all about uh, OpenSUSE Leap, um, we actually will um, uh, uh, give a little bit of a disclaimer this time, because um, Christopher and I, we like to make clear to everybody who's watching this, that we are just crazy open source enthusiasts that uh, happen to be working at SUSE. And yes, uh, we might be a little bit branded here and there, but uh, whatever we say and do in this uh, video is uh, totally uh, um, just uh, Chris and me being open source enthusiasts. Yeah? Yes. Sir. All right, this was a disclaimer. We are open, we are easy, and we are free. <laughs> exactly, free. <laughs> free as in freedom. Um, and talking about freedom, we have uh, Lubos here. Um, Lubos is, as I just said, the uh, release manager for OpenSUSE Leap. And for who doesn't know what OpenSUSE Leap is, Lubos, can you please introduce yourself and OpenSUSE Leap? Yeah, uh, so hey guys, as you heard, I'm Karen Payson. First of all, actually a release manager for OpenSUSE Leap. Uh, what some people may ask, what does the release manager do? So it's basically co coordinating the release and overseeing everything and basically drive any sort of improvements to the release. You know, make sure that we are not doing it any worse than we did before and just make sure that we can get a little bit better in everything that we do and also shape the audience, I guess. All right. So uh, regarding OpenSUSE Leap, uh, uh, maybe about shaping the audience, uh, which means like, yeah. you know, we have a mission, right? Like who, who are we trying to kind of uh, address with OpenSUSE Leap and so on? And this is something that we should really work on, like we as OpenSUSE release team. Uh, so that's what I mean by shaping. Regarding yeah. OpenSUSE Leap, uh, there is one thing. Yeah, this is the wow, team. Wow, this is like super awesome. this year. Yeah, it's if you are interested, find me on LinkedIn. You will see a picture of unboxing this. Well. Picture. Yeah, it will be a picture of the contents because most people don't know what's inside, which is really cool. And this was one of my most liked uh, articles or, or posts on LinkedIn. <laughs> so basically, there is a book, few few leaflets, uh, the DVD, and some discounts for uh, for various open source, uh, source magazines and so on. But the book is really cool. That's that's the one you can also find on GitHub of Open Suzette. So yeah, about Leap, like Leap is one of the two distributions, right? We have OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and OpenSUSE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, you know, that's, that's just something with Angel and Devil today, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and myself. So, so maybe, uh, what, what, what's your short view on why is there Tumbleweed and why is yeah. there Leap sure. both from OpenSUSE? No, that's, that's a very good point. So we have two distributions. What, if you say, well, OpenSUSE, you know, it, you have to really address one or the other. So they are very different. So uh, the Tumbleweed is the rolling release, right? Which which is getting constantly updates, uh, and uh, the OpenSUSE Leap is the more like a, I call it enterprise version of OpenSUSE, which which has the regular 12 month release cycle, which is predictable. We we have some you know agreement that we will not change distribution too much in between these releases and so on. We can update kernel, for example, but we shouldn't do it during you know uh, within one release. And uh, mm -hmm. so users kind of know what to expect from the distribution. It's, it's not very rapid in development, even when we are really trying to refresh as many packages as we can. Uh, so in some cases, you may actually see that we have the same version of software as Tumbleweed, but that will most likely not be the case for all the core packages, such as kernel and so on, where the Tumbleweed will be always newer. But then, you know, you, you, you actually take the risk that, you know, you may break your application because you have a brand new version of this, which is something that you need to take into account. Uh, so what, what we actually claim in the mission for Leave is that we are trying to bridge enterprise and community. And I think that this right. kind of, yeah, this is pretty good description. And uh, so... I mean, also, like like one of Emil's favorites is always, when we talk about stuff we haven't had here in technological yeah. solutions, he always says, explain it so my mother would understand. Yeah, and, and she's, right. actually, she's actually here, so I can get her to really yeah, test if she understands. Emil's mom seems to so be for your mother. Aficionado. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you want to install OpenSUSE to your mother and you want to make sure that it can work at least for 12 months, I would go for Lee, because you know nothing will change much during the release. 
if you if you actually have mother who wants to have the latest greatest and she's willing to fix it by herself, I would go for tumbleweed. Like that would be choice, you know, for, yeah. for somebody who really wants to have the latest Python, let's say. Yeah. Um, and, and and if you're just a, a pensionado and you don't know much about technology, uh, you're not really uh, don't want to dive into all the different uh, uh, specs and everything. Uh, still, could there be a reason to choose? Well, a Linux desktop at first, and then if you choose a Linux desktop, why uh, OpenSUSE Leap? So why OpenSUSE Leap? Uh, that's a tough question because some people have different requirements. Like if you are a Yast lover, of course, like you always choose OpenSUSE over anything else. But what I feel like we are doing right is that we, we are backed by enterprise distribution, right? So so there is. Uh, I always see it that the stability and enterpriseiness is granted. Like uh, by by this synergy, but uh, I feel that based on the leap retrospective that we had uh, for for the last release, that the users really like these stability and migrations. Like the the selling points of leap, from what I heard from users, not what I think, but what they actually said in the re retrospective, which is by the way public. You can just Google Google it and uh, open to the fifteen to retrospective. It's on our wiki. Mm -hmm. Is that like every second person that responded was basically highlighting the stability. And easiness of migration. Migration is yeah. in I have leap 15.1 and I have leap 15.2. Like that was like zero issues uh, on this topic. So I feel like if you really want to make sure that your system can like migrate with any issues without any issues, like you would go for leap because this is our strongest point really. Stability, migrations, and yes, which people highlight a lot. So yes, we saw. <laughs> It's also, I always say, you know, kind of tumbleweed is from developers for developers because that's yeah. kind of the use case. You know, if I'm writing on code, on software, on stuff, I might need the newest package rather than the last stable package because I'm trying to, you know, develop something new. Um, and I mean, it's comparable. I've used both. Um, but, you know, just for running my laptop as a private yeah. person and doing all the, the kind of stuff, you know, surfing, watching movies, writing emails, doing exactly. whatever. I absolutely choose Leap because Leap, yeah. Leap is just a smooth experience. It's safe. You know, I press the little update button when updates are out and I don't have to think so much about the yeah. whole tech stuff behind it. And what I would one, recommend... Yeah, you, you first. You go first. Just as far not speaking about Leap, I'll also give recommendation from Tumblr because I feel like I was talking about Leap a lot, is that what I wouldn't choose Leap and I would always go for Tumblr is like the very latest hardware. So... Uh, because we are basically behind in kernel, usually, like sometimes we actually ahead, that was the case in Leaf 15 to Alpha, where we had newer kernel than Tumbleweed, yeah. that was by accident, because they were blocked on their workflow, but uh, generally, like, if you have something like bleeding edge, you would always choose Tumbleweed, and, and if it works with Leaf, go for it, but like, you, there is a greater chance that it will work with Tumbleweed first. I have a very strong argument for uh, uh, OpenSUSE Leap. Uh, I told it in uh, one of the other initiatives of uh, Christopher, together with Kasten uh, Schmatschke. Uh, uh, we came to the uh, argument that uh, it's very important to choose the Linux distro you want, or even the desktop you want, even uh, even wider. So also look at Microsoft Windows, at Apple, at Linux, and then which Linux because of the community. So the, the community, yeah. uh, how big is the community? Do they have support in your language? If you don't speak English, is it possible to get uh, easy support in French? Or uh, in, in my case, or my mother's case, would be Dutch. Um, the, how is the support there? Uh, so how many people are there in the community and what kind of people are in the community? Are they really willing to help noobs like me? Or they really prefer to help uh, people who, uh, so if you say, uh, uh, I prefer the command line above Yast, that they say, okay, oh, no problem, <clears throat> and they go uh, away on the command line. So it depends on the size and uh, uh, the, the people who are in the community. So let me start with Dutch, like before we move to the community, because like for Dutch, I have something that I would like to read to you, Dutch. So, uh, this is a part of Leap 15 to retrospective written by a Dutch user. Maybe it was you. We do retrospectives fully anonymously. So, oh, okay. so there's okay. no way that I would know who it is. Uh, so it's somebody who, there's no login involved when you actually send the survey. There's just cookie which tracks whether you submitted it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't, you don't, you know, like uh, submit uh, feedback twice. So installation of Dutch version for Belgium went flawless. I appreciate the work that has been done. It's a fine experience working with Leap 15 to. There is one important exception, and let's track somewhere else. Uh, 
But uh, but like we actually had really good feedback about the Dutch Dutch translations, which is really cool. And uh, one of my tasks is actually to send appreciations to the translation all the people who contributed to translations. Yep. And uh, and Dutch is in between them, but this is still pending. Like I, I just sent some recognitions yesterday, but translations are still on my watch list. So regarding the size of the community, so that's also like I can give you a lot of data from the retro because this is where I got feedback and where I had to uh, recognize some people that were working on Leap. So I, I gave up 150 recognitions to people who really uh, who were somehow addressed by in the retrospective, which means that they were working on a component which was really like yeah KDE rocks, you know, like this was really really nice release of, with KDE uh, smoothness and, and 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 how fast the new release of GNOME is. You know, it, it yeah. takes the known people. There is way more people working on it, so so the, the entire number is like uh, way higher. But out of these people that that we really recognized that were visible somehow this release, it was pretty much 150. Um, when when I was randomly looking uh, later uh, sooner this year into the data, how many like core contributors do we have? It was like I would say something below 50, where uh, these people actually come from outside of SUSE. Also, that's kind of tricky because some people, you know, like they, they finish a, a job and in the Friday afternoon they, they keep on working, so it's unfair to actually not list them. But we have about a really 50 active people from from outside of the company, how many, uh, which how is many which people, is really cool. How many people outside of the company? Sorry, I didn't get the number. At least 50. At least 50. Okay, and 50, this yeah. is like. This is yeah. only for this reason. So imagine that it could be 500, but 50 people actually really contributed to lead 15 to very specifically. So there is wow. a record I, uh, change log. Yeah. I, I have a very good example of kind of non-community community work. And where I'm saying, you know, I was really surprised how accessible and open the open Zuse people really are because yeah. I was saying, you know, I love using open Zuse and, but I'm not a coder so much. So, you know, I can't contribute on the code level. This sucks, you know. What can I do? And then Lubosh said, like, hey, dude, you know you're always somewhere on the internet and talking about stuff and you yeah. work in marketing, so hey, don't you want to join one of our marketing meetings? And oh, that okay. was kind of an informal process. I had fun joining. Very you nice. know, I got to kind of also get the feeling maybe I'm doing a little bit, you know, towards <laughs> the community work. And I think that's really important because it yeah. was not a, you know, fill out 50 forms mm -hmm. and we'll have some committee vote if you're allowed. But it was, yeah. hey, you know, come on, come in, tell us what you know, tell us what you got. And, and that felt really, really awesome. So also kudos yeah. to you guys. You know? So, you so uh, let me elaborate a bit on these numbers. So 150, uh, out of these 150 uh, recognitions that I gave, uh, 80 of them were only to engineering and the remaining 70 went actually to documentation, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, documentation, team okay. which are doing localization and also marketing. And there was one extra group. Yeah, artwork. Uh, because oh. I kind of like to split in between marketing and artwork because marketing yeah. is the effort to push something. Artwork is I'm actually working on some art, yeah. which could be code. You could say code as well, but I really mean like uh, images, leaflets for the release and so on. So we have very active people on that front as well. Uh, and, you know, like the OpenSUSE marketing telegram group, aside from XFC, XFace telegram group is one of the most active that we have. Oh, wow. Okay, really cool to hear. I have a yeah. last question for you, uh, Lubos. Uh, is there uh, one of the languages or one of the um, technologies or, or territories where you need extra people to help uh, with um, the next release or with documentation or well, can we help you basically that's a simple question right right so so talking about languages specifically like we are a little bit i would say ruby centric uh, distribution because a lot of our tools yes are actually written in ruby but this release what i really felt was the python because we were refreshing pretty much all the python packages to be on the very last version from factory and therefore i knew that this was the biggest effort and there uh, the, the person who was working on it could use a lot of help so i would say python takes a lot of the languages part yeah. also the fact that now we are introducing parallel versions of python so you can have like k8 available next to the system python that we have and so on so this is like one of the languages that's really visible and then you have rust which takes a lot of time to build in the obs so you can see that from the different perspective yeah. i would say python is where we we could use some help as well okay so shout out to everybody who is uh, working yeah. a lot a little bit experienced in python Please, yeah, how I want people, people step up. Yeah, and, and how, how can they then they just go to opensuse.org? Right. 
Now, so we are actually having a report discussion right now on the mailing list, uh, which is about the help of packages, which uh, which is basically what you are asking for. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if I want to help, where is the help needed? So the, yeah. we are trying to figure out how to actually figure out like which packages are not in a really good shape, which is not easy task really, because some packages just don't get any update because they are rock solid. You know, they existed for 20 years. And some packages are just like uh, not getting any updates because there's nobody to send these updates uh, and uh, or work on these updates. So this is an open topic, and we have some idea like you can see in the retrospective like uh, which areas of the distributions didn't go too well, and there are a few where we need to address it. And uh, we also we are right now reworking the release engineering way uh, way how to build the distribution. So if there is somebody who's interested in, in distribution building, we could help use some help as well in the release team. Uh, always you are always welcome to join our sessions. All of them are public. They are happening on Wednesdays, Wednesdays morning. Um, that's actually a very cool thing. So all of the meetings that at least I'm attending regarding open source, they are all public. We try to actually share like invitation at these over mailing lists. It's not easy because we don't have a single calendar file that you could just take. Maybe that's a hard thing for us. You mm -hmm. could do that. Mm -hmm. But you can always attend just like uh, Chris already mentioned. He just joined the marketing session and he could just talk and, and we were taking notes. And yeah, it could be anonymous if you want to, if you don't want to mention your name. So we respect that, of course. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, I, I think we've uh, uh, covered a lot of topics. Uh, for Absolutely. me, it was uh, very interesting. I learned a lot about uh, Open Source Leap, about Tumbleweed, about community, about what's important to the community. So um, I would say uh, I'm trying to pronounce your name now correctly. <laughs> Lubos Kotsman. Kotsman. Yeah. Ah, well, close, close. That's fine. That's close, fine. Close. It's one of the better pronunciations. Yeah, one of the better pronunciations. I can, I can pick that one. Can I just raise one more thing? That, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, go ahead. If you forget it, I feel like it will be, I promise that I will erase it. So, this <laughs> October, we, we are actually aiming to have a intermediate release for Leap. I, we are still not sure if it happens, like there is a lot of factors which can cancel the effort. But basically, we are working now on a on a prototype of Leap, which is actually based on SUSE Linux Enterprise. So, so this is a public effort where we are trying to combine, again, like our mission is to bridge enterprise and community, and we are taking it even like closer. The effort is called Closing the Leap Gap. And uh, so we are really trying to make sure to reuse as much as we can to join efforts to be a little bit more efficient and, and do things once where it's possible to do once, even do the same effort twice. And so this is the hottest topic right now for the OpenSUSE release team. And so uh, if you go to newsopensuse.org, you can already see some articles about the jump prototype. But uh, yeah, I, I, I will not put like, more information to you because it's all quite technical. It's, uh, the distribution will look the same, it's just about the way how we build it, which will okay, use a lot of... I have a, I have a great idea. Go now let's, let, let's put this out to especially new developers and all the developers. Also in October yeah. is Hacktoberfest. And Hacktoberfest oh. is basically about um, new developers making their first commit and actually, you know, writing their first bit of code on GitHub into a project. And, uh, you know, OpenSUSE and generally a lot of the tech is on GitHub. Absolutely. So if you want to start your, uh, you know, your programming open source career, or if you're a seasoned developer and want to help out, please join us and maybe even do that as part of the Hacktoberfest initiative. Absolutely. I already joined, by the way, so so you can you can just do what I did and join. It's just it takes like really to log in somewhere and just say yeah, I am part of it. Wow, oh, cool. And then it, cool. What do you know the date for Hacktoberfest? It's, it's, it's pressed until until the end. Yeah. Oh, exactly. okay. Well, cool. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chris. Yeah, super, super. Thank you very much, uh, Lubos. Really uh, great uh, to have you in uh, our Friday catch up. So uh, everybody, if you like this uh, video, please let us know, because then we actually know that we are making it for you. And if you have any questions, comments, complaints about the haircut or other uh, uh, complaints, uh, the color green, if the color green is the wrong one, then uh, let us know. And uh, we will, uh, well, actually we might do something of it with it. Christopher, because we are independent, right? Uh, exactly, you know, like we love to get likes, shares and especially comments and feedbacks on our videos because that, I think Emil has been helping us out, you know, because uh, we are always in kind of, you know, our flow with producing this thing um, and it's really, really great uh, to get feedback in any direction, you know, if you yeah. have something that we can do better, if something's really awful, if something good, there is no bad feedback, you know, it's all great and helps Absolutely. us make this show even better and you guys have more fun while watching it. <laughs> so Just realizing that we have actually RGB, like the base colors, you know, to, to combine any other colors. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, actually we have the full spectrum here. 
Full spectrum. Full spectrum. Yeah, full spectrum. yeah. yeah. We, you can make any color you want. All right. Hey, thanks, world. See you next week. Bye bye.